terminals which are present inside the cell. Correct? So in this session, let us get into know more about the cell organelles and their functions. Okay? So now before getting into this session, so I would like to tell the difference between the prokaryote and the eukaryote. So this prokaryote and eukaryotic cells, they are based or distinguished on the basis of their nucleus. So in the initial, we have discussed about the cells based on the number, correct? Based on the number of cells, we have distinguished the organisms as the unicellular and the multicellular organisms, correct? You know what is uni? Uni means the organisms which have a single cell, whereas the multicellular organisms are the organisms which have many cells. We understood that. Now, on the basis of the nuclear, the cells are distinguished as the prokaryote and eukaryote. What is meant by pro then? Pro means it is a primitive. Pro means it is a primitive. Eukaryote means it is a cell. So here the cells which have the primitive nucleus, we call them as the prokaryotic cells. Okay. So when I talk about the examples for this, the bacteria. Bacteria are the examples for prokaryotes. Then what is mean by the eukaryote? Eukaryote are the organisms which have the true nucleus. Here you means true, karyote means cells. So the cells which have the true nucleus or the cell organelles which are embedded inside, we call them as the eukaryotes. It may be the unicellular organisms or maybe the multicellular organisms. They are the examples of eukaryote. Clear? So, when I talk about the examples for these, the amoeba, plants and some blue-green algae are the examples for eukaryote. Clear yeah, now? Let us get into the main part of this session that is the cell organelles. So, before getting inside the cell organelles, we should know where are those cell organelles present. They are present in the cytoplasm. Correct? So, where is the cytoplasm? It is present inside the cell. Right. So the cell contain the liquid like material which is called as cytoplasm. Inside the cytoplasm there are so many cell organelles embedded. So let us get into the first one that is the nucleus. Let us understand the nucleus. So when I talk about the nucleus, the main function of the nucleus is it controls the cell. That is it is called as controlling center of the cell because it has a capacity to control the various activities which has to be performed by the cell. Then, the nucleus is spherical in shape. They, it is separated from the nuclear membrane. So, there is cytoplasm, right? Inside the cytoplasm, there is presence of nucleus. And this nucleus, it is separated. This nucleus is separated from the nuclear membrane. And this nuclear membrane are porous. What is meant by porous? That they have small holes on their surface. They allow some of the materials which has to be entered into the nucleus. That is what the function of the nuclear membrane. Then inside the nuclear, there is nucleus, we have the nucleolus. What is nucleolus? Nucleolus is a small spherical body. It is a small spherical body like structure which are present inside the nucleus. They are embedded by the chromosomes. Very important to understand chromosomes. What are chromosomes? Chromosomes are the genetic material. They are the genetic. If you, if you look at the structure of the chromosome, this is how it looks like. So this chromosome, they are thread-like structures. They are found inside the nucleolus. Then what do they do? This chromosomes, they carry the genes. From where do they carry? They carry the genes from the parents to offsprings. When do they carry, if you ask me, they carry these chromosomes at the time of fertilization. So, when we talk about fertilization, there are a lot of things we have to learn. So, let us learn in the next upcoming sessions when you have a lesson called the reproduction. So, we learn the fertilization over there. So, by now, you understand that how do they carry the genes and what is the mode of carrying the genes. The mode of carrying the genes is through fertilization. So, what is the main function of chromosomes? Chromosomes, they carry the genetic material, that is the gene, we call it as DNA, right? So, that genetic material is carried by the chromosomes from the parents to offsprings. So, it represents the characters of the parents to offsprings by carrying or by transferring the chromosomes. Clear?
So the next cell organelle is the mitochondria. When I start talking about the mitochondria, this is how the mitochondria look like. So this mitochondria is considered to be the powerhouse of the cell. It is called as the powerhouse of the cell because it generates the energy. Whatever the energy which is to be required, has to be required for the cell to perform the activities, all those energy is being released by this mitochondria. So mitochondria helps in generating the energy, hence it is called as the powerhouse of the cell. Correct? So moving towards the next cell organelle that is the plastids. The most important thing which we have to know about the plastids is they are found only in the cells. They are not formed in the animals, okay? They are found only in the cells but not in the animals, okay? So, the three kinds of plastids which are being found in the cells are the chloroplast, chromoplast and the leucoplast. So, what are the functions of these three types of the plastids? So let us understand. So, when I talk about the chloroplast, they are the chlorophyll pigments which are present inside the chloroplast. Chloroplast contain the chlorophyll pigments. What is the use of chlorophyll pigment? You know that the chlorophyll help in the photosynthesis. When I talk about photosynthesis, you all are aware about what is photosynthesis. What is photosynthesis? It is a process where the plants prepare their own food with the help of sunlight, chlorophyll and other raw materials. Correct? So that is what about the photosynthesis? So this chlorophyll is present in the chloroplast which is green in color. So let us talk about the chromoplast. When I talk about the chromoplast, they are different colors. They are, these are the plastics which exist in different colors. And when I talk about the leucoplast, they are the pigments which are white in color. Okay, the three types of the plastics are the chloroplast, chromoplast and the leucoplast. So this is all about the plastids. When I talk about next, the thing is endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum, they are embedded in the cytoplasm. There are mainly two types of endoplasmic reticulum. They are the smooth endoplasmic reticulum as well as the rough endoplasmic reticulum. In the beginning only I told what is why it is called as smooth. Why it is called as rough? Because, see, if you look at a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they are free from the ribosomes. Correct? And if you look at the rough endoplasmic reticulum they are comprises with ribosomes that means the endoplasmic reticulum have the ribosomes on their surface correct so that is why we classify them as smooth and rough so when i talk about the functions of smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum they help in the synthesis of protein whatever the oil contents oil things which are being produced by the cells that is being synthesized, that is being functioned by the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Lipids says they are the oily things, okay? So then when I talk about the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they help in the synthesis of protein. You all are aware about what is protein, correct? So this protein synthesis or manufacturing is being done by the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Moving towards the next cell organelle that is the vacuole. So the vacuoles are actually the empty spaces. We have also seen these empty spaces in the onion piece. When, they, when we focus those onion piece under the microscope, we have seen some of the empty spaces, right? Those empty spaces are called as the vacuole. And this vacuole helps in the storing the food and also sometimes it also stores some of the waste products which are present inside the cells. Vacuoles act as a storage of food and also they help in the storing of the waste materials. So that is what the function of the vacuole. So next let us move towards the lysosome. So 100% they will ask in the exam lysosome and then mitochondria, then this plastids, all they are the compulsory questions they ask in the examination. So what are lysosomes then? So look at the structure of lysosome. How does the lysosome look like? So they are the cell organelles. They help in the I, that means whatever is when the cell is being ruptured, the cell is being taken care by the ribos, rhizosome, sorry, uh, the lysosomes. So they are called as the suicidal backs of the cell. I repeat, the lysosomes are called as the suicidal backs of the cell. Why are they called as suicidal backs? Because see, they consume all the dead cells. See, for example, suppose if you suddenly fall down, what happens? Your cells may get ruptured. 
they make a damage those damage cells are being consumed by this lysosome all the dead cells are ta being taken care by this lysosomes clear i hope you all are having a clear picture about what are cell organelles the different cell organelles which we have discussed in the session and also the functions of the cell organelles see in the session i have also taught you some of the important functions of the extra cell organelles which might not be there in your textbook but so these cell organelles and their functions are very important to know okay so this is for the session and then my in my next session i'll be teaching you about the difference between the plant cell as well as the animal cells and how to write the structure of the plant cell as well as the animal cell so if you feel this video is useful please like share and subscribe to my channel and you can also follow on the social media thank you